Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to pick up where I left off yesterday. And uh, this is the channel where we are building a Minimax 1100R. Um, I think, you know, last time I built the 1030 uh, ultralight version and mine came in just like a pound or two underneath the weight uh, that it needed to in order to qualify and as, as, an, as a legal ultralight. I had a Rotax 277 on it and um, I chose the uh, 1100R this time. Num number one, um, it's a little simpler to build, uh, so I can get in the air a little faster, and plus I can carry, you know, a nice 40 horsepower engine, a little more speed, a little more climb. Um, so decided to go that route. And so today we're going to get these. We're going to be working on these aileron spars, um, and there's some things you have to, some details you have to work out. <clears throat> and so you can see here at the tip, I've got this section marked out and get where you can actually see the pencil line, um, that we, uh, we have to remove this area. And, uh, cause what it does is it, out here toward the tip, it allows just some access to the, uh, uh, the backside of the bolt, um, and stuff where the aileron pivot is. Uh, you have the same here at the center section, and this took some careful, careful measurements. Um, in, in my mind, I was thinking that this was going to actually end up on the center of uh, rib number five. It does not. It actually ends up over here to the side, um, like that. And then that's where this uh, this doubler comes into play. That actually is going to go in behind here and connect those two. And so this cutout happens from uh, from here to here, so that it actually spans the uh, rib number five. But then at the same time, um, the cutout happens in this half of uh, the doubler over here, um, so that you have access to both sides of this uh, this nut and uh, these washers and the bolt side over here. And as is um, like I usually do, um, if you cut one um, and they're the same thing, you might as well cut both of them. So when I get to the next wing, I don't have to spend any time cutting any of this. I'll have already worked all this out and have these cut and ready to go. And you can see at the uh, root part of the wing, um, we have the same, the same thing here where I've got the section that has to be removed. So uh, yeah. <clears throat> So I'll get uh, I'll get going with that and uh, get these cut out. Probably use the spindle sander, just get a little nice corner um, in there. I was going to bring my Dremel tool um, with a router bit on it, where I could maybe route these out. But I think I'll just end up using a. Uh, uh, <clears throat> let's see what I got with me here. So I end up using my jigsaw, um, and then I'll. I'll be able to um, just use the spindle sander to clean up those edges and uh, yeah no problem so I will get uh, get set up for that and we'll get that uh, we'll get that going
So now I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use this one to mark this one. So I just bring it up to the center line where these two pieces are going to come together. And uh, right there. That looks pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So those match up. And so I'll take this to the uh, bandsaw. Since it's not a long piece, I can easily maneuver it. And then I'll uh, take it to the spindle sander. Just clean it up a little bit and then uh, we'll be in a good shape. I'm going to do both of these at the same time. All right, so those are all set. And uh, so how this will go is uh, this one comes in here like that. This comes in like that. And the root piece comes over top. They'll all connect right there. And uh, I will uh, get these attached to the ribs and then I'll uh, put the doubler in and I'll probably clamp that together. And uh, yeah, that's how all this goes. And this all came off of, uh, this was a rib drawing number 17. Um, and I think I found by turning down the brightness, I can actually show you, uh, I can actually show you the drawing. I don't, you won't be able to probably zoom in on it, but um, that's this particular area right here at the top where all those measurements are laid out and uh, had to think through it just a little bit just to make sure I was getting it correct and what point I was referencing from so then I finally just decided that from the point where the two joined together that's where I started measuring from and uh, yeah now it's all it's all good so I'll get uh, get everything in place and yeah let's do this Okay, so I've test fit the, uh, the clamps all the way down and I've got everything set up uh, where it needs to be and so now I'm just going along and I'm actually marking, uh, sighting the ribs, make sure they're straight and I'm marking uh, um, plywood where the epoxy is going to go so I can put epoxy on both surfaces as I always do, uh, some on the rib, some on the plywood, um, this one is obvious here. All right. <clears throat> Just want to clean up this uh, little bit here with the spindle sander. Um, wasn't getting a perfect match to that splice piece, so I'll be right back. All right, I got everything ready. I got my gloves on. Time to mix some epoxy. So that's all set up and uh, 
in uh, the epoxy setting. So that's all good. And in the meantime, I'm going to take the uh, root rib and it's because it has um, this additional eighth inch and sixteenth uh, inch plywood in here. You have to actually reduce, um, pick some material out of here so that it fits. So I'm working on uh, kind of figuring out what that is. And what I what I see is uh, since it fits good at the bottom, actually. 16th is planned for so you don't have to worry about that but the, uh, the uh, eighth inch so I just hooked it on the bottom there so I can kind of see where it's going I'll move you over here maybe so I'm just marking where the bottom of that is and I know to fit over that I've got to come into the uh, material that Got to remove this part, and I got to remove that part. A little bit off the back side, a little bit off the front side. So I'll just make a make a mark here. So on the bottom, the top. So it's about there, about there, about here. I'm gonna give myself just a little extra room, and the same at the front. Got a little epoxy that has to be moved here, so. Epoxy. I got epoxy on the brain, so. I've got a little fly, little material here that's got to go away. Some of the plywood in front of the nose rib. Um, plywood in the nose rib. <clears throat> All right. So I'll just mark that out while I'm hanging. So it's got to be, probably it's a little more than an eighth of an inch. Yeah, that's, just has to do with the, you get the epoxy and stuff in between layers and it grows a little bit. So I don't want to have to do it more than once if I don't have to. So I'm going to give myself just a little bit of a margin. Um, Alright, so uh, no Dremel tool, so next time I'll have to bring it and uh, take care of that business, but uh, um, I feel pretty good about what, what we got done today, so um, the next step after, uh, after these is uh, go in here and each of these stations will get uh, a nose rib like the, like the one you see down there at station 5. Um, for the uh, plywood that gets wrapped around the leading edge of the aileron. And so we'll work on that next time. And there's also some, uh, some RS2 or RS3, um, it's a quarter by half, I believe, that actually gets attached in between the gussets here um, to strengthen this spar. So yeah, cool. So thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I do appreciate it. Um, don't forget to subscribe before you go if you're not already a subscriber. For those of you who have, thank you for following along. And I'll catch you later.